Oh my, special interests. Today, a neurotypical Cassandra wife asks, why should I always have to kowtow to his special interests? Let's talk about that. And this is a reminder to send us your questions to liveandsteve at gmail.com. Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Liv. And, and together, together, we're Liv and Steve. I think a really important thing I had to learn in therapy after your diagnosis was that I needed to learn to be courageous to you and to tell you very boldly, black and white, as unemotional as I possibly could, exactly what I was expecting. It really stunk because I wanted you to figure it out and then I would feel noticed and pursued. So today we'll give some tips, but really we want to say we understand and that hope is on the way. Our breakthrough makes the way for your breakthrough. Steve, can you talk about those special interests before you were healed? I sure can. So one of the things was, was a novelty. I liked new things. I liked to learn new things. I liked new food, new ideas, new places, new vacations. And I think part of the frustration with you is I would read a book or I'd talk about these things and I would live that life in my head and I would never do it because I went through in my head, so I didn't have to do it. I think there was probably another like main special interest that I had, and I guess we would call that like frugality. Some people would call it like being a cheapskate. Um, some people call it like, like saving money or, or being wise with money. Remember? So my mom is an Asperger too, she's on the spectrum. And I remember we would go to McDonald's, right? And our house is like 15 minutes from McDonald's. And I would, she would say, what would, would you want to order? I said, I'm not ordering anything. We're only 15 minutes from home. I mean, we can get home, I can make a sandwich, we'll eat lunch, and everything will be great. And she would kind of like look at me and I said, no, I'm not ordering. I'm going to wait and save the money and we're gonna have, I'm gonna have a sandwich at home. So I had a couple other special interests. One was skiing and another one was, was fishing. So we get married and we live, we're, we're living in Tacoma, Washington. And there was a place in Bend, Oregon that was having, it was a timeshare. So I had a special for like a hundred dollars. They would fly a couple days. You got to ski for four days. They gave you a rental car. They gave you food. I mean, it was, it was just awesome. And what did you think about that? I, you know, honestly, I felt like I had no choice. It's like, just, it was your idea, we were doing it. And it wasn't really my first choice because I had broken my leg skiing as a young girl. And so I didn't share <laughs> that interest like that. But I was, you know, I was a good sport. I went along, but what I didn't like is the hard sell moment at the timeshare where um, it was like gun to the head. It was pretty intense. It's timeshare, right? So it's, it's the time for the sales pitch and it's a hard sell. And so as an Aspie, I'm thinking, oh man, wouldn't it be great to have this place? You know, we could come every year, we go skiing at, at Mount Bachelor. And, and so I'm trying all of this stuff on in my head, right? And the salesman is looking, and we don't have the money. We don't have the money for the down payment. We don't have money for monthly payments. We don't have that just wasn't part of the budget. And so he looks at me, somehow he finds out that, that Libby's an, an artist, and he says, well, maybe we could have Libby do artwork, you know, as to serve as the down payment. It kind of felt like I was being signed up for something that I didn't volunteer for or okay. It was, it was pretty awkward. I felt like we barely got out of that with like signing our life over. So yeah, that was, that was a moment. <laughs> And then there was another like, like ski story. So I was in the army and I was sent to the Sinai for a year. On a company tour, I'm in Egypt, Libby's still back in Seattle. Um, halfway through the tour, I took 30 days to leave. Yeah, then we bummed around Europe for a month. And you're probably thinking, well, that's pretty expensive. How is that frugal? Well, we had a book called Europe, Frommers Europe on $25 a day. And we literally spent $25 a day. Um, we did it dirt cheap. Somehow we found out that the army actually ran resorts in southern Germany. So for $110 per person per week, we had a ski week. 
everything was included. Now remember, frugal, skiing, perfect match. What I wasn't really like keyed into was Libby and her needs. So the first day of the ski week, there's like a, there's like a, a, a ski kind of test, if you want to think of it that way. And so it separates the people into different ability groups. I think there were three or four ability groups. So I was in the top ability group and Libby was in the next one down. I didn't think anything of it. But that was my fault. Right, that's his perspective. My perspective is I haven't seen you for six months. I flew all the way to Europe and one of these weeks, it pretty much feels like you're completely separated the whole day. And I feel like I'm always like, I was always going along with, going along with, and then there'd be this dawning, like, oh, I'm actually really hurt by that. And it was, it was crazy town. To this day, I can remember the feeling of doing the ski off and being told, okay, you're in that group for a whole week and he's in that one. And it was like, and he was so okay with it. And I wasn't. Yeah. That was a moment. <laughs> I actually thought she would like prefer to be in the grouping with her ability level, not even dawning on me that she just wanted to be with me the whole week. That's how crazy it is. So another special interest I had with, was fishing. We actually inherited a canoe from Libby's dad. Loved it, right? I'm gonna get a, a tent. So we're gonna go camping. Um, there were a couple times we tried family camping. Didn't work too well. Yeah a disaster. The stress for him of lack of, you know, everything being like it needs to be a lot of, a lot of tension, a lot of tension, like not a happy, not a happy memory. Uh, so because of my frugality and how I grew up early on, our family vacations were spent with my mom and dad. So they would rent a cabin at a resort. We would go up there for a week and we would spend a whole week with them. For somebody on the spectrum who's frugal, what couldn't be more awesome than that? Except, Except that, for me, it was carting seven children up there where I am literally trapped with a whole family of Asperger's. I was exhausted. I was never relaxed when we got home. You know, it was not a relational time, just super, super challenging. So I would say those are some pretty good examples. You know, looking back, I do not know how Libby did it. I don't know how she survived all that craziness. How she put up with, I mean, it's just like, it's mind boggling. Sometimes I ask that same question to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so those days were hard and that struggle is real. So this is what I want for you, Cassandra. Spend some time meditating with God. Quiet yourself, close your eyes. Picture a scene in your mind of you as an eight-year-old, which is a great age because children trust so much easier. You're with Jesus in a wonderful safe spot of your choice. Hear his voice reminding you that he sees you. He created you unique with your own interests. Look into Jesus's eyes and ask him to tell you something you can do special for yourself. Then you have to be able to communicate to your partner that you matter and you're gonna enjoy doing something that's very special to you. If you want to invite him, your husband into it, do so, otherwise be free to do it yourself. Cassandra, you're valuable, you matter. Ask God to open up the possibility of healing for your partner or husband. For me, I used to get up at 3.30 in the morning and go running. Now I paid a price to be alone, but I'm so glad I kept that little piece of me. In the first few Live and, Live and Steve episodes of season two, we begin to discuss how to hear God's voice. Go back and listen to those episodes to learn this very valuable and comforting tool. And I want to mention that as Lib began to hear God's voice back in 2017, her new confidence and courage really helped me to take notice. Hope really is.